To contextualize in between back to back and front to front, it is important to consider my background as it has played an important role in my endeavor of this project. I currently live in Indonesia, a predominantly Indian suburb that was placed south of Johannesburg. Indonesia is separated from its neighboring suburbs El Dorado Park and Soweto by a cemetery that uses a railway line, a river and marsh to divide them. These areas are where the Indian colored and black communities were displaced to as a result of apartheid spatial planning. The scale at which these suburbs are separated are large enough to isolate each of them spatially, but also in dividing people of color racially. In order to prevent an uprising, this not so successful yet successful spatial division disempowered the Indian colored and black communities. Disempowerment through spatial displacement was what apartheid did and used so successfully. As someone born into displacement, the ideas of disempowerment and identity are important to me and were the motivating factors in my reconsideration of the site. Rosettenville sits closer to the city centre but still exists south of Johannesburg. It was a predominantly Portuguese suburb constructed with bungalow typologies that housed the community. The bungalow itself was an architectural typology that was originally from Bangladesh, after which was colonized by the British. The typology was taken and reinterpreted for its South African use. This satellite imagery shows the extent of the bungalow typology throughout the site. The spatial framework of disempowerment was discussed on an urban scale, but this reinterpretation of the bungalow typology on a domestic scale was a mirror to its urban displacement motivation. This animation displays the different iterations of the front of the bungalow typology. To begin framing the project, let us begin with front to front. The bungalow faces the street. This, architecturally, allows the owner to protect the house as they can view the street and their front yard from the veranda. The house itself is placed in the center, with the front yard and spaces on either side for parking. This means that access to the house and to the back of the house was extremely controlled and secured. Back to back included the back of the bungalow and within the backyard existed the domestic workers quarters, away from the public eye and also with controlled access from the front yard. The unequal distribution of power across the block meant that from the bungalow one could look directly into the domestic workers quarters, stripping power from the back through lack of privacy. The back of the bungalow also usually had the kitchen in which the domestic workers could perform their duties away from the dining or living room and away from the eyes of the family. This image shows a collage of an existing backyard I explored with my group on a site visit. In between references the alleys or servitudes that run between the backyards of the bungalows. Usually around four to six meters wide, it serviced the waste that was produced from either side's bungalows. Needless to say, its relationship to the adjacent domestic quarters was an intentional design. This unequal power distribution of the plot during apartheid was interesting. What is more interesting is the way in which people have approached managing the contemporary condition of the site in order to make it lucrative. Many illegal compounds are constructed in the backyards as a means for income generation. To maximize profits, these compounds are built densely and rooms are rented individually. This means that the main existing economy of the plot within Rosettenville is a rental economy. Post-apartheid, front-to-front uses the bungalow form as a facade to hide the illegally constructed compounds in the backyard. This creates an invisible architecture as the bungalow veils and protects its inhabitants in the back. The alley sometimes is extended into from plots. It is also used for parking or dumping. It simply isn't a safe or secured space. The illegally constructed compounds are dense and are kept at a single level to allow the bungalow to mask them in the backyard. This resulted in an overexpansion of the compounds in the horizontal plane. This meant that ventilation, lighting and other fundamental requirements for basic human habitation become lost. However, this alley for me became the special opportunity in which I initiated my design. Since the unbalanced site is as a result of the in-between and the back-to-back, -back, I thought the alternative of reversing this layout maintains a viable opportunity. 
to reverse power so that the back can become a new front. To do this, the reconsideration of the alley was necessary, along with the cooperation of the property owners and the community. The alley was then reconsidered as a pedestrian street in which the backyards now become front yards. To simply redistribute power along the plot only balances the way in which the plot exists spatially. However, to truly re-empower the inhabitants, the economy of the block must be reconsidered. And so, the rental and retail economy are the fundamental income generators implemented through this design. The property owners, tenants, and shopkeepers play an important role in this design. I looked at the power that the individual has on the site and narrowed it down to two things. One's willingness to negotiate and one's willingness to invest. Capital and the power of negotiation were the driving forces that allowed for coherency within the design. I began the design by drawing the line of where the backyard began on either side. As you can see, this grid line is flexible and is mapped to the existing conditions of the chosen block. Next, an analysis of the conditions of the existing compounds were done, in which the ones surveyed as unsafe were reconsidered. Since some property owners have more space than others depending on how much their plot was maximized, those property owners maintain the strongest power in the sense of their willingness to negotiate their land use. Therefore, property owners with no space could still invest in their neighbor's plot through a negotiation. In this way, both owners benefit and the scheme progresses. The implementation of the architecture begins at a simple basic sheltered unit that grows through investment into a bigger tool for income generation. These images begin to show the way in which these units can grow. They are programmed to create retail spaces and accommodation spaces and begin with a small investment. These units were then placed onto the site based on the property owner's decision of how to implement their role within the block scheme. And so the scheme maintains the potential to grow as the capital grows. With the alley now as a pedestrian street, the in-between exists within a shared backyard. Protected from either side, it begins to create community spaces within the private and public realm. The red band displays the new backyards that serve the back of the bungalow as well as the back of the pedestrian street. The different colored blocks represent the variety of units scattered along each plot to form the architecture that parallels the alley, creating a safe space from the in-between through new fronts and reconsidered backs. Architects and designers have a responsibility in considering the ways that their designs are implemented. We ought to design for the present but with consideration of the future. In this project, where power is redistributed, I attempt to touch on ideas of how space can be decolonized through economic empowerment. Ideas where the domestic quarters in the back can now become the driver for a new empowered front serves to reconsider spaces in a way that leans towards a more opportunistic future. At the end of the day, designers like myself have a simple goal, one in which those who are previously disadvantaged have the opportunity to tip the scales of economic empowerment back into balance and to find spaces in which their identity exists fairly and justly. And where we are unable to find spaces that do that, that we maintain the integrity and responsibility to create those spaces. Thank you.